here's a spot. Yes. Out, damned spot. Out, I say. One, two. Why then tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? My lord, no more of that. You mar all with the starting. There's the smell of blood still. Oh, the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. <laughs> Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. She cannot come out on her grave. To bed. To bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, come. Come, come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. The English power is near, led on by Malcolm, the brave young Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenges burn in them near Burnham Wood. And what does the tyrant? Great Dunsinane he strongly fortifies. Some call him mad, others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murders sticking on his hands. Now, minutely revolt, upbraid his faith breach. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robes on a dwarfish thief. Who then shall blame his pestered sense to recoil and start when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march on to give obedience where it is truly owed. March towards Burnham. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood removes to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. It's the boy Malcolm. Is he not born of woman? The spirits that do know all moral consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth, no man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. And fly, false things. The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon. Where goddest thou this goose look? There is ten thousand- Geese, villain! 
soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily-livered boy. What soldiers, Patch? Death of thy soul, those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers, Wayface? The English force so please you. Take thy face, hence. Seton. Calling. Satan. Seton, I say. Calling. Push for me Seton. Seton! Calling. Seton. What is your gracious pleasure? I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Aye. Scurry the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Aye, my lord. How does your patient doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that! Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet, oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of the perilous stuff that weighs upon the heart! Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw a physic to the dogs on none of it! Seaton, send out, doctor. These things fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch! Aye, my lord. If thou couldst, doctor, cast the water of my land, find her disease, and cleanse it to a sound and pristine health! I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. These English, hearest thou of them? Aye, my good lord, your royal preparation makes us hear something. I'll be not afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsinane away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bough, and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host, and make discovery ere in report of us. Aye, aye. It shall be done. Let our just censures attend the true event. Towards which, advance the war. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. Aye. The cry is still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Aye. Here let them lie till famine and ague you eat them up. <laughs> what was that noise? It is a cry of women, my good lord. I almost forgot the taste of fears. Time had been, my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek in my fell of hair. But at a dismal treaty rouse and stir as if life were in it. Direness familiar with my slaughterous thoughts cannot one start me. <laughs> Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. <laughs> She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out. Out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. <laughs>